All right. Good morning um, or good afternoon, good evening, any time of the day where you catch this video. On your phone, in the car, on the TV, right on the internet. Um, welcome to one of our Crazy Physics um, paper review sessions. Uh, we're going to have a couple of these reviewing a paper for you so that this can serve as a revision tool for you. All right, so it's Crazy Physics. Um, you can check our website. On YouTube, you can just look for the channel. So go to YouTube and search for Crazy Physics. You will have lots of videos that we're uploading for your benefit there. All right, so uh, this is Bishop here, 0817442103. At the end of the session, I'll give you more information on what we do and how we operate. So today, we're looking at... Um, Physical Science Paper 2. This is a June exam. So in case you have the paper, that would be lovely. We're going to run through the sessions together as fast as we can um, so that you can now use this for your revision purposes. We're going to start from multiple choice and run through the whole paper. All right. So without wasting much time, let's run through the paper. So with Physical Science um, June 2018 question paper. Right, let's. Okay, the multiple choice. An example of a saturated organic compound, a saturated organic compound, a saturated organic compound. Here, our correct answer is D because it's a propane, and propane belongs to the family alkane and they are saturated. So correct answer there is D. When ethane reacts with hydrogen gas in the presence of a catalyst, the product is. I want us to learn how to deal with such questions. Ethane. What is the formula for ethane? Best draw the structure of ethane. Ethane is a double bond because it belongs to an alkene. All right. So we have that. OK. We have that. They said reacts with hydrogen gas. What are we going to have here? What would you would notice is this is a double bond, and this is an addition reaction. Okay, and what are we going to have? We are going to have our carbon atoms there, and you would notice now this hydrogen is added here and here. So we are going to have hydrogen and hydrogen, and this is ethane ethane this is an addition reaction and this is called hydrogenation because we are adding what hydrogen so ethane my correct answer is a i hope we're good there so question 1.3 question 1.3 1.3 1 all right Study the structural formula of the functional group below. Look, you must understand your functional groups. You must understand your functional groups. These, when your carbonyl group, this is called a carbonyl, is sandwiched, then we have a ketone. The correct answer here is B. This is a ketone. All right, so let's go on. So please master your functional groups very well. Okay, it will really do you a, a whole lot of help. D, B there, ketone. 1.4. The potential energy graph for a hypothetical chemical reaction is shown below. All right, now just before we even answer the question, let's see what type of... Um, a reaction is this. Is this endothermic or exothermic? This we would learn in, this was grade 11 work, and it's also part of rates of reaction. This graph here is endo, endothermic. Why am I saying endo? The heat of the products, because my enthalpy is actually H product minus H reactants now you can see that the heat of the product is greater 
than the heat of the reactants. So our answer here, delta H, will be greater than zero or positive. So it's an endothermic. Let's go and check our options quickly. It cannot be A. It cannot be C. Uh, D. Our answer should be between B and what? C. Okay. Let's see. We said delta H already. Heat of product. What's our heat of product there? It's B. Our heat of reactant is what? A. So it's B minus A. All right. Let's go check. B minus A. Okay. We find here B minus A. But let's walk through and make sure that that answer is totally correct. How do we calculate activation energy? Activation energy is measured from the activation complex there to the reactants. So it is C minus A. Our correct answer, therefore, is B, 1.4 B. So please master this. This is a grade 11 concept. Awesome. Okay, let's move on to question 1.5. Question 1.5. Study the hypothetical reaction below. The rate of reaction in terms of the number of moles of P used up is 1 times 10 to the power negative 3 moles per dm cube per second. What is the rate in moles per dm cube at which R is now formed? Okay. Let's see how to deal with this. This is what we do here. We can simply say, look, two moles of P, my two comes from here, all right? Two moles of P will produce what? Four moles of R, which is just times two of that. And the rate at which this one is now used up is one times 10 to the power negative three. All right, 1 times 10 to the power negative 3. Remember that this one is used up at this rate, and at the same rate, 4 moles is formed. At the same rate, 4 moles is formed. So, we're saying at a particular per second of this, 1 times 10 to the power negative 3 moles is formed in every second. But if you check this now, it is twice. What you need simply to do is to say it will be twice of that. If you cross multiply, what are you going to have? 2x equals to 4 times 1. You need to learn this stoichiometry. Divide both sides by 2. What do you have? You have a 2 there. All right? So x is 2 times 1 times 10 to the power negative 3. My correct answer is d because it is formed twice more than... Um, P. All right, great. These are very lovely stoichiometry questions. Now let's go to 1.6. 1.6. Study the following reactions at equilibrium at a certain temperature. All right, what can we quickly get from here? What I know here is this my reaction is, my forward reaction is endothermic. Endo. About the earlier on, endothermic. Which one of the following factors will change Kc value straight ahead? The only thing that changes Kc value is temperature, C. Out of all the factors that affect chemical equilibrium, the only factor that changes Kc value is temperature, 1.7. Which one of the following represents the product formed during the hydrolysis? Quickly, let's define hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is the reaction of salt with water. So what do we do? We take our hydronium ion and react this with water. What are we going to have? Okay, look at this. This is going to lose a proton. And if it loses a proton, what are we going to have? I'm going to be left with three hydrogen atoms, ammonia. That's a three. Okay? It's a three there. Plus, now my proton is lost to this. This is going to be H3O+. Now, let me quickly help 
some of our learners who don't know why the sign changes and when to put a plus, when to put a minus. Very simple here. Look at this ammonium here. It's a positive charge, dative covalent band from grade 10 and 11. If I lose, so we're saying this is plus one. If I remove one proton, it becomes minus one. I'm removing. One minus one would give me a zero. That's why there's nothing here. And I'm left with four minus one here. I have what? Three. Look at this. Water. Water is zero. What are we doing? We are adding one. Zero plus one. What does this give us? Plus one. That's why we have this there. And my hydrogen atom is added to this. What do I have? Two plus one, three. So these are my products. Let's go check our answer. NH3 plus H2O, 1.7B. Awesome. Let's look at 1.8. Please rewind in case uh, you did not get it so that you get the concept that has been asked in this uh, question. Potassium nitrate is used as an electrolyte in salt bridge of a copper zinc cell. Copper zinc cell. Okay, I'm going to do more of this when we do get to electrochemistry, but let's answer this question quickly. Now, in a salt bridge, just quickly want to show you something very fast. I don't want us to stay so long here. Let's answer something here. That's my salt bridge. Okay, let's say this is my anode and this is my cathode. Check our videos on electrochemistry. You'll be able to understand the anode and cathode better. One thing I want us to know is this. Here you have positive ions and you have negative ions. These are called cations and these are called anions. This one. All right. Look, the movement is very simple and I want us to get this quickly. Again, get the video on electrochemistry. We did a lot of explanation on this movement. But what's going to happen is this. This one would move towards the side and this one would move towards the side. The cations will move towards the cathode. The anions will move towards the cathode. Just master that quickly and then you'll be able to understand. So my potassium ions, potassium is positive, all right? My nitrate is negative. So the positive, which are my cations, will move towards the cathode. And my anions will move towards the anode. So what is our correct option? Remember we said cations will move towards the cathode. All right? So let's see. For us to answer this question effectively, we need to know what is our anode and what is our cathode. Let's just quickly go check for a table. Um, I think I have one here. We need to just check which one would be oxidized and which one would be reduced. All right. Good. I've got a cut out section here of the table. <clears throat> now, if you check, going straight to the point, we're comparing, it says copper zinc. So I'm going to compare copper 2 plus. We'll learn all of this later. Copper 2 plus, which is here, positive 0, 0,34, and zinc. The more positive one will be reduced. This is more positive. It will be reduced. So. This is going to take place at the cathode. Red cat. Reduction takes place at the cathode. So my copper becomes the cathode and my zinc becomes the anode. The more positive will always be reduced and reduction takes place at the cathode. All right. So let's go back to our table here where I was analyzing. We said our copper now is the cathode. So now this is my copper half cell and this is my zinc so we said the potassium positive ions will move to the cathode we don't have there it says anode all right we mark it wrong but let's check this now it says we said the positive will move to the copper electrode t correct copper electrode they will not go to the zinc and they will not go to the negative. All right, because under a galvanic cell, the cathode is positive and the anode is negative. So our correct option there is D. Again, I'll repeat quickly. 
on the galvanic cell, cathode is positive, anode is negative, the cations will always go towards the cathode, the anions will go towards the anode. All right. And in this case, the more positive one is reduced. So copper, 2 plus will be reduced. So here's my copper electrode. All right, so the positive will move towards the copper electrode. Question 1.8, our correct answer is D, 1.9. All right, question 1.9. Which one of the following shows the electrode where the electrons are gained? Definition quickly. What is reduction? Reduction is gain of electron. If you remember, most of us learn it through the oil rig, where oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. So we gain at uh, reduction, and reduction will always take place, red cat, at the cathode. So we actually gain at the cathode. Let's answer that. Where electrons are gained, it's not the anode, it's not the anode, it's either B or C, all right? So what takes place, chemical change, it is not oxidation. Reduction takes place at the cathode, all right? And electrons are gained at the to check our answer here. It's the rig and the red cat. Number 10, nitric acid. We must just learn this. It's called the Ostwald process. Okay, Ostwald process. There is something here that we, we teach with. Let me share it quickly with you. Let me share it quickly with you. All right. Uh, Okay, well, we'll, we'll do it under fertilizers. All right, under fertilizers, we talk about um, Chao San. Chao San, sounds like Chinese. It's a VIP. Chao San is a VIP. What are we talking about here? Contact process, harbor process, Ostwald process. All right. What are we producing here? Sulfuric acid. What are we producing here? Ammonia. What are we producing here? Nitric acid. What is the catalyst here? Vanadium pentoxide, V2O5, vanadium pentoxide. What is the catalyst here? Iron, which is Fe. What is the catalyst here? Platinum, which is Pt. So you read it down this way now. All right, it goes down that way, and this one goes down. So under Ostwald process, we're producing what? Nitric acid, and we're using what? Platinum, harbor, ammonia, catalyst, iron. Contact, sulfuric, and the catalyst is vanadium pentoxide. So question 1.10 there is C. Now let's run to our structured questions. Question number two, organic chem. All right. Here we go. Question number two. Next to each letter, A to F, in the table below, is a molecular formula of an organic compound. Like the, one of the best ways to deal with your organic um, chemistry is to learn to draw your structures. Learn to draw your structures. In this case, it would be easy if we were to structure. So let's run through, let's draw the structure of A. I have two carbon atoms, one, two. I have five hydrogen atoms, one, two, three, four, five. And I have bromine there. All right. B, what do I have? It's two. All right. And then I have four. One, two, three, four. Automatically, it gives me a double bond. C, what do I have? C4. H10. How many carbon atoms? Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we have that. It always becomes very easy if you spend time to quickly draw this out. What do I have for D? C2H6O. All right, C2H6O. 
H6O. Let's see how to do that. One, it's two carbon atoms. One, two, three, okay, four, five. Now I am left with one hydrogen and one oxygen. The only possible way to have that is to have this, which is an alcohol. E. Let's check E. E. Alright, if you look at E there, it's C3. Now, two things come to mind. C3. One, two, three. Okay, I have that. I have that. One, two, three. Okay, now if you check this, um, we could have, let's do this, four, five, Okay, now if you check this, I've got one space, one space, one space here. And I'm only left with one hydrogen and one oxygen. So it gives me a clue to say, look, what I'm talking about here is a double bond somewhere. Because I need to reduce the, I've got two things left, hydrogen and oxygen, and they must fill in here. Automatically, I require a double bond. Okay, so double bond. And carbon will never, not be double bonded to hydrogen, it's double bond what? Oxygen, and then we have that. And what is this? This is an aldehyde. By the way, aldehyde and ketones can be isomers. So I'm going to draw another structure immediately. One, two, three, I have that. And I have all of that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now this is a ketone. This is a ketone. Okay, let's do something quickly. Let's write down the name of all our compounds. What is the name of this? What is the name of this? All right, this is two. So we're talking about ethane. Ethane. All right, ethane. So this is bromo, bromo ethane. Okay, all right. One bromo ethane. There's nothing to write one because it's symmetric. Here, what do I have? Ethane. All right, because it belongs to alkene. Here, what do I have? I have butane. Number four, what do I have? I have ethanol because it's two carbon atoms. Number E, what do I have? Uh, this is an aldehyde and it's three, so this is propanal aldehyde. And here it's a ketone. What do I have? It's the carbon atom. The carbonyl atom is on the second one. So we can have two, and this would be what? Propanol. Although we cannot have one propanol, it would not be possible. All right, so two propanol. What about F? Let's go check structure F now. Let's draw F. Let's draw F. What do you notice? There are two oxygen atoms. Once you see two oxygen atoms, it's either a carboxylic acid or an ester. All right. Let's see. It's three carbon atoms there. One, two, three. All right. So one hydrogen, two, three, four, five. I have just one more hydrogen atom. So automatically, we said it's going to be a carboxylic acid because there are two oxygen atoms. So we have that. But again, esters and carboxylic acid are functional isomers. I'm going to give you something now to help you remember that. Okay? So I could have this. This is propanoic acid. Let me take it down a bit so that you can see the structure. Propanoic acid. There we go. Propanoic acid. Prop because it's three. Okay. Now, let's look at um, the other structure now. The other structure that we can have. The other structure that we can have is to have an ester. Okay. So if I want to draw an ester, what am I going to have? Think about the oxygen first. It's possible now for me to have this. It's possible for me to get this. All right. Remember, it's COO. That's my functional group. 
Okay, and then we have one, two, three. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. You see, it's three H six O two. Or I could have another structure where I now have this. One, two, three, and I have my oxygen there, and I have five, five and six. Quickly, what will of this be? Remember that your double bond comes from the carboxylic. This comes from the carboxylic, and here it is one, and one is meth. All right, this is what two carbon, which is eth. So this is going to be what ethyl methanoate methanoate and here what do I have if you check this this comes from my carboxylic and I have two so I'm going to start from here it's going to be methyl ethanoate now these two are esters I wanted to check something here quickly F and meth two plus one gives me three which gives me my probe Myth and earth again gives me probe. We're not even answering the question here, but I'm just trying to make a summary here. Look, think about the word cake. I want you to remember the word cake. And here we're talking about functional isomers. Functional isomers. All right? Now, cake. C stands for carboxylic. And E stands for esters these two are functional isomers of one another why the middle a and k let's deal with that a now stands for haldehyde and k stands for ketone those are functional isomers again what are functional isomers organic structures with organic compounds same molecular formula different functional group but they have the same molecular formula all right let's answer the question a halo alkane halogen a alcohol what did we say our alcohol is our alcohol is t you can rewind and go back to the structures already we answered all of this by drawing the structures alcohol where's our alcohol t there all right unsaturated hydrocarbon it must be an alkane alkene no alkene or alkyne b done so this is b haldehyde oh my god we already have it aldehyde where's my aldehyde propanol e a product of thermal cracking of compound c now compound c is butane if you break it down you would have an alkene and then the other alkane. So B is my correct answer. Because thermal cracking is the breaking down of a, a bigger hydrocarbons into smaller units. All right? 2.2. Uh, if compound F is a carboxylic acid, okay, now we've been specific. Compound F, which is propanoic acid now. Write down the structural formula of the functional isomer of F. Ah, guys, already we have it. Check here. It is either of these two. These are functional isomers because they have the same molecular formula, which is C3H6O2, but they belong to a different functional what? group. So we either, have, either we have ethyl methanoid or methyl ethanoid. But the question says, draw the structure. Here are the structures already. The IOPAC name of, the, of a functional isomer of F. Again, question already answered. And then you move on. Already we have the structure and we have the name. All right, 2.3. 2.3. Remember this. This is just a summary to help uh, some of us quickly understand that. 2.3. Now, your definitions. Please, guys, let's learn definitions. A polymer... A polymer is a large hydro, it's an organic compound, but it's a large hydrocarbon formed from 
simple hydrocarbon units from from simple hydrocarbon units simple simple that means small all right so IOPAC name they talked about compound B let's go check what's my compound B I think we named it what is compound B ethane now we take so many things and combine them that's where the word poly poly means many so what my answer for 2.3.2 .2, our answer would be polyethane you see that you say polyethane or polythene polyethane or you can simply say polythene which simply means in english many ethane and you're done there all right Balanced equation for the polymerization reaction, 2.3.3. Balanced equation for the polymerization reaction. Okay, polymerization reaction. So I'm going to have my ethane, which is H, C, double bond. All right. Okay, because of space, let me do this. Because of space, so that we have enough space as I'm trying to give you the question, all right? So we have ethene combining with a number of ethenes. We don't know the number, so I'm going to put three dots, which means it's continuous, all right? And this will now give me ethane, ethane. But now the ethanes are so many, so I'm going to come here and do this here, and that's my polyethane. All right, so it's on such, these are unsaturated compounds uh, leading us to saturated compounds. So it's an addition polymerization. All right, addition polymerization. I'll discuss more of this when we get to reactions. 2.4, compound A. In fact, guys, let me quickly help you with something here. Let me help you with something very, very beautiful here. I'm going to knit this question back. All right, guys, this is this is one, one of the things we know about organic chemistry, and it helps with your reaction. All right, think about someone, I normally say single and seriously searching, all right, somebody who's single but seriously searching, all right, and had to travel to the United States of America and got a wife, and the name of the wife is called Sue. This is very simple. What you're saying here is this. When you talk about a saturated compound as a reactant and the product is also saturated, you are simply talking about a substitution reaction. If my reactant is unsaturated, unsat, and my product is saturated, what am I going to have? An addition reaction. Now, if my reactant is saturated and my product is unsaturated, I'm simply going to deal with elimination reaction. This is very, very powerful and it will help you remember a lot of things. 2.4, compound D is used as a reactant in the production of compound D. Let's go check A and D. What is my A? Okay, A is there, it's a saturated, and D is also saturated. Alcohols are saturated. All right? If I were to take you back to our diagrams, let me take you back to our diagrams quickly. Okay, let's, let's draw this afresh. Seem to have lost that page. Um, I have one, two, okay, I'm just going to be very fast here now. Two carbon atoms and a bromine, hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. All right? This is compound A. Let's compare this to compound D. One, two, three, four, five, and I have OH. Do you notice I'm only removing this and putting this substituting? Because it's a saturated, it's also another saturated. What kind of reaction is that? It's a substitution, single and seriously searching. Substitution reaction. So our answer to two point, um, Four is substitution. State changes that may be made to the reaction condition, conditions in question 2.4 to obtain compound B. Now let's go check what compound B is. 
compound B is C2H4. So we want to get how do we convert A to B? What are the reactions that we, we need to do to convert A to B? Let me take you through. Look, we want to convert this. We want to convert this. Now, we don't need this. We want to convert this to this. Okay. Now, what do you notice here? Do you notice, number one, it is an elimination reaction? All right? And because it's an elimination reaction, what do we need? We need to use concentrated base, concentrated strong base, a concentrated strong base. An example is sodium. Um, all right, instead of a dilute, we need to use a cons because we are eliminating. We are eliminating. All right. Any strong base will do. What will happen is this now. Here, if I now take this, look at what's going to happen. I will now remove my... If you check this, how many hydrogen atoms do I have? One, two, three, four. Okay. Look at what's going to happen. Let me draw this for clarity. One, two. This is my... I have this. I have... Sorry. I have a BR. I have H. I have H there. Now, I want to remove this and this so that I now have remaining how many carbon atoms? Two. And how many hydrogen atoms? Also, that. So what do we do? I need something to take care of this too. I'm going to introduce my sodium hydroxide. Now, the sodium will now react with bromine to give me sodium bromide. And the hydroxide will take care of my hydrogen to give me H2O. So I have this. So the condition is to have a strong, concentrated, strong base. Guys, anytime you see a concentrated acid or base, it's always an elimination reaction. All right. Good. So that is how to deal with um, your questions there. Already we're done with question number two. We can try to look at question number three. We're going to break this video into two sessions so that the sizes are quite small. Question number three. Still an organic. All right. The boiling point of straight-chain alkanes and straight-chain alcohols are compared in the table below. Look, quickly, before you answer this question, one of the things, in, in order to answer the question, one of the things you must learn to do is to use ice. What do you do? You identify the intermolecular force. Number two, you compare the strength of the intermolecular force. Compare strength of intermolecular force. This is a quick summary. And number three, you talk about energy required to overcome the intermolecular force. Okay? And there are three types of intermolecular forces that we're looking at quickly. Three types, which are your high, um, let's start from the, from the small one, the, the weak one, London forces, and London forces is in all hydrocarbons, all right? Number two, we have dipole, dipole. And number three, we have hydrogen bond, okay? Hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bond is basically between oxygen and hydrogen. Dipole, dipole is between carbon and other elements like carbon and oxygen. Why your London forces you have between carbon and hydrogen. So this would help you to quickly identify where these intermolecular forces are present. All right, look at the first question. Explain the increase in boiling point of alkanes. Oh, hold on. Before I explain that, boiling point, again, what do we know about boiling point? Straight chain, straight chain, 
um, hydrocarbons have a higher a higher boiling point all right because of a larger surface area a larger surface area okay you'll see how I will answer these questions just now question 3.1 explain the increase in boiling point of alkanes as indicated in the table all right how would we answer this question 3.1 they said already boiling point is increasing you can see it's increasing all right what do you notice the number of carbon atoms are also what increasing as they are increasing okay let's do this um, carbon number of carbon atoms okay as the number as the number of carbon atoms increases okay what happens the chain length the chain length also does what increases and if the chain length increases we're talking about a larger what surface area now what is the implication of that all right the point of contact the point of contact of because they are all alkanes, because they are all alkanes, the point of contact of the London forces, London forces increase, okay, which increases the strength, which increases, which increases the strength. of the compound and finally what do you talk about energy required energy required guys we don't break we overcome to overcome the London forces increases now that's the that how you explain let's let's let's, let's check we said number one what did we say number of carbon atom increases the chain length increases number two point of contact of London forces does what increases and number three energy required also does what increases perfect three marks number two explain the difference between the boiling point of an alkane and an alcohol of each having three carbon atoms all right so we're looking at three carbon atoms per molecule by referring to the type of intermolecular force now this is where again you come and use your eyes in fact to make it simple we could actually do this let's do this alkane and what do we have here alcohol guys you must learn to compare quickly what type of intermolecular force identification i what do we have london forces what do we have here we have london forces and hydrogen bond all right this is the key this is the key hydrogen bond london force for doing that alone you have compared you have one mark what do we do now compare the strength what is this weak intermolecular force what do we have here a strong what intermolecular force now you have compared and number three you talk about this little energy now we talk about energy is required here to overcome a little energy is required to overcome what do we talk about here lots of energy is required okay let me let me write this clearly so that it's we said little energy is what required to overcome the intermolecular force here lots of energy is required okay and finally we can now talk about low boiling point 
and here we talk about a high boiling point guys this is how you answer your questions i for identification c for comparison and then what e for the energy now look at question 3.3 does the vapor pressure of alcohols increase or decrease with an increase in the number of carbon atoms? One thing we must know, um, compounds with high boiling points have low vapor pressure because it takes time for them to boil. It takes time for the vape, for the for phase change from liquid to gas. Hence, they have low vapor pressure so the question says does the vapor pressure of alcohols increase or decrease with an increase in number of atom carbon atoms do you notice the boiling point is increasing therefore the vapor pressure must be decreasing that there decrease how will the boiling point of two methyl propane compare to that of its chain isomer what do you know about two methyl propane one two three two methyl all right so that's my two methyl propane there okay we have this and the chain isomer of this will be butane all right it will be butane chain isomer because now they have the same number of carbon atoms this one here is a straight chain it's going to have a higher boiling point. This is spherical. The surface area is a bit smaller. We are going to talk about a low boiling point. All right, the question says, how will the boiling point of 2-methylpropane, number one, it will be lower than? By referring to the structural differences, guys, we already answered that by saying this is what? A straight chain, while this is spherical. So if it's spherical, the boiling point becomes very low. All right? It says, give a reason by referring to the structural differences between the two. The structural, the way it looks. Straight chain, larger surface area. Spherical, a smaller surface area. All right? Now let's move to question four. Okay. Question four, organic reactions. Look, to make your life very easy, let me, let, me, let me do something here. What you need to do is this. Identify quickly which one is saturated and which one is unsaturated. Once you can have that done, it becomes very easy to deal with your reactions. All right, now let's check this. Propan one all. What is that? That's an alcohol. It's saturated. This is a haloalkane because it has bromine. It is saturated. All right. This is an ester here because of double O. It is uh, okay. This is going to be an ester. And what is this here up here? How many carbon atoms? One, two, three. So we have C three H. Let's write it clearly. C3H, this is 3 plus 1, 4 plus 2, 6. Now, that is an unsaturated compound. Okay, so let's check. What type of reaction is represented by A? Saturated to saturated, what do you have? Substitution. What about B? Saturated to unsaturated, what is that? Elimination elimination what about c all right this is alcohol and i have what an ester quickly that is esterification esterification i'm sure most of us eat porridge here yeah, quickly most of us eat porridge and the common brand is ace and you cannot eat ace porridge without water now, you have simply done that. The next time you go to a store and you look at ACE in, in a store, shop right, pick and pay, do your chemistry quickly. Alcohols will react with carboxylic acid, 
to form esters and water. Again, alcohols will react with carboxylic acid to form esters and water. So while you are in the store, do your organic chemistry. All right, so that is esterification. What about D? Okay, check this. Unsaturated, coming down to saturated, United States of America. What is that? That's an addition reaction. And you have your four marks very, very fast. Question 4.2. What is the function of sulfuric acid here? It simply acts as a, a catalyst. And so there, there are two questions they can ask you. It acts as a catalyst. And what property? The property, property of H2SO4, it is a dehydrating agent. It is a dehydrating agent. That's the property. And the function is it acts as a catalyst, but the property is a dehydrating. It helps to remove water. IOPAC name of the organic product. IOPAC name of the organic product. The organic product is just simply the ester, because that's the organic. All right, let's check how do we draw that structure quickly. The best thing is for you to draw the structure. Uh, we have CH3. We have what? CH2. When you know how to draw structures, organic chemistry becomes quite interesting. CH2 and very easy to get your marks. Now, what you notice, there's an oxygen there. All right? There's an oxygen. Okay? And then we have another oxygen, which is connected to the carbon. And on that carbon now, do you see we have a CH3? Now, this is con changing your condensed formula. Let's check here. It's CH3, it's CH2, here it's CH2, here now is OOC, do you see what we did there? And then here you have what? CH3. Now let's name. Remember that your COOH, the double bond, comes from the carboxylic. All right, so what carboxylic acid do we, did we use here? This is two. So we used ethanoic acid. Why am I saying ethanoic? Two carbon atoms. How do I know it is the carboxylic double bond? All right, remember it's COOH. That's my double bond um, carboxylic group. And what do I have here? Three. So this is what? Propanol. This is from propanol. So the name of this ester will be propyl, and then I bring this ethanoate good propyl ethanoate 4.2.3 structural formula of the other organic reactant structural formula remember they said from reaction c we already we have our propanol you see propanol one all right now the other reactant already we said that it's ethanoic what acid all we need to draw now, do you see structures make a lot of sense? Ethanoic acid, it's two carbon atoms. Ethanoic, ethane. One, two, three, four. And because it is a cap, sorry, because it is a carboxylic acid, is C double bond O H. That's your ethanoic. Always make sure that around your carbon, carbon has a valency of four. So you need one, two, three, four. That's my ethanoic what? Acid there and simple to do all right 4.3 use structural formula formally for all organic reactants and products to write a balanced reaction for a okay what is a from propanol to okay so the best thing to do is to understand your reactions what do you need let's start from drawing propanol okay what is propanol? Propanol. Propan one all. It means it's on carbon number one. All right, I have that. I wanted to see how to deal with organic chemistry. Look at this. What am I producing? Let's draw this structure. CH3, CH2, CH2, 
and what BR. Let's compare these two structures quickly. Let's compare. What is the difference? The only difference, this is this. This is this. This is this. The only difference is this. So number one, I know it is a substitution reaction. Guys, how do I then get this? I am going to react this. I want you to see something here. Very beautiful. I want to remove my hydroxide ion and replace with a bromide ion. So I need something to take care of this guy. And the quickest thing to take care of that guy will be hydrogen. But now this hydrogen must come in with a bromide. So the best thing is to have hydrogen bromide. Look at what's going to happen. This hydrogen will connect with this to now form what? H2O. What happens to my bromide? It takes the place there. And you're done. Using organic stru structural formula. So here I, can, I need to A, B, R structures. And we are done with the organic section. All right. This is one hour already of video. To make it short, this is going to be part one. We are going to now deal with part two. From part two, we take it from question five, six, seven. Five, we'll talk about rate. Six, we'll talk about chemical equilibrium. Seven, we'll talk about acid and base. Eight and nine, electrochemistry. And question 10, fertilizers. I hope this first session, so this is June exam video one, or part A. Uh, dealing with multiple choice and our organic what chemistry. I hope it has been of great help to you. Please check for the uh, continuation of this video, part two. Remember, this is crazy physics again. All right, this is crazy physics again, and we have some of our materials. We we'll keep sharing these materials. All right, these are physical science, grade 12 learner book. It's a text and a workbook. Most of the things that we talked about, how to deal with all these questions, are actually in this book. All right, give us a call to order, visit our webpage, send us an email, we'll be able to speak to you. Here's the grade 12 material that we have. All right, we have grade 10 and 11 materials too.